25 years, Davis & Davis has been providing legal help for local people involved in accidents, trip and fall, defective products, drunk driving victims. Get the help you need at Davis & Davis, a team of professionals working for you.
and service, your price and service leader in the Tri-County for over 40 years. Don't just buy a Ford, buy a Paletta. Call 377-2760. Redstone Field tonight for tonight's Harold Stephen High School football game of the week. Tonight it's the Brownsville area and the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders. The Raiders come into the ball game tonight with a record of eight wins and no losses. They are 6-0 in the Interstate Conference. They're currently ranked number two in the WPIL as the Red Raiders have been rolling along, coming off an impressive 48-14 win last Friday night over the Cougars of Carlington. They have really not been challenged yet this year. Their best ball game was when they defeated the Wash Island Little Presidents 30 to 21 back in week number five. But it's a ball game that the Red Raiders led at one point 30 to seven. They were the preseason number one coming into the season. They are the defending Whippeal champions and they have a load of offensive weapons. Starting with number four, Lee Fritz, the senior quarterback at 6'2", 190, has been doing it all for head coach Dave Sarah's Raiders, throwing for close for 500 yards and running for close to over 600. He has um, just been a force on offense for the Raiders, but Lee Fritz is also a very solid defensive back, and he does return punts and kickoffs for the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders. If you look no further in the backfield, then big number 31, Lanford Simpson, the senior running back, 6'1 and 240, last Friday night, 122 yards. The first ball game to Simpson has really been healthy probably since last year's WPIL semifinal matchup with the Falcons. Some offseason ankle surgery, uh, a banged up shoulder and hip during the middle of the season, but Simpson, I'm talking to some of their coaches, is at full strength for tonight's matchup. And how important is Lee, uh, excuse me, land for Simpson to this ball club? How about in the first half of the Shallery game, did not play on offense, Shallery trailed just 12-10 at the half. They also have a good solid wide receiver, two of them, and Sammy McLaughlin, the junior wide receiver, 5'7", 160. But the kid you may want to keep your eye on on the offensive side of all for the Raiders tonight, number 22, senior wideout, Craig Bland. Dude, he had a phenomenal game last year against Browns in the uh, WPL semifinals with some great catches. He is a key. Derek Mees, Mears, a junior tight end, uh, another potent offensive weapon. Look for Danny Hunt, also a senior running back to get some time, along with Matt Emmerich. The Waynesburg Central Red Raiders will make their way onto the turf field in the Republic. Their First trip to the Republic since 1990. On the other side for the Browns and Falcons, it starts with number 12 on offense, Billy Butte. Billy closed in on a 700-yard mark. He was banged up with two ball games, and he's been, uh, been doing an impressive job the last two weeks for the Falcons. They will be without the services of Justin Salmon. Here is the Falcon offense. Look for Chris Zipkovich at quarterback. Jason Wilson being the starting fullback. Hugh and Stokes will start at the running back. Seniors Jason Kramer and Brandon Smith. Will be at the tight ends. Brandon Smith played a Super Bowl game last Friday night with a couple of big catches, three receptions against the Bulldogs. Senior uh, no, uh, center Brett Ballowin, senior guard Jess Saxon, the other guard is David Ferrell, senior senior tackle Tony Ferrell, and on the sophomore side.
Stone Field will give you the captains for the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders. It's number 22, Craig Bland, number 60, Nick Eady, number 4, Lee Fritz, number 31, Lanford Simpson for the Falcons, Billy Pugh, Brandon Smith, Terry Stokes, Brett Balaban, and Sam Petko. And uh, Jesse Kramer's in the back along with Greg Lee. We'll get you the rest of the seniors as the Falcons have brought all their seniors out here tonight. As it is senior night tonight, Dan Gilday, number 39, number 50 is John Durda, number 70 is Kenny Farrow, and number 54 is David Biddle. So the Falcons and the Raiders, the last two years, there's been a whole lot more at stake, but tonight, a lot of pride in store. As we said, probably more in stake tonight for the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders than the Brownsville Falcons. The Raiders need this win tonight to keep pace with the Aliquip Equips in the number one seed in the WPL playoffs. The pairings will be released Monday night, so when you watch this ball game, uh, by the time it's over, the WPL pairings will be announced. Uh, right now, the Brownsville Falcons are the four seeds. They could be number three, should they pull the upset tonight against the Raiders, and according to Cougars, will upset the Seattle Rebels down at the Navy tonight. That's as high as the Falcons will go. They know they will be on the road next Friday night to start the Whitfield playoffs. The Raiders are going to be at home no matter what happens tonight. They will be the number one seat out of the Interstate Conference. The worst they can do tonight, if they would lose, would be co-champs with the Wash Island Little Presidents, should the Little Presidents knock off the Shallery Cougars. So tonight, uh, a little bit more at stake for the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders than the Browns or Falcons, but the Falcons have been playing some good football tonight. They've been, they have won four in a row. They have won them very impressively. But this will be their stiffest test since the Wash Eyeball game. And I'll tell you what, Don Bartolomew's and Falcons right now playing some good football. And Dave Sayers Raiders helping for the first time this year. Tell you what, nice size crowd on hand here at Republic. I think we got ourselves a good one. I think the key to this ball game is if Browns can keep it close early, and I think we're in for a good night. The Falcons have won the task. They won the football. They're going to pick the ball out for the first. Billy Hughes going back along with Terry Stokes. And the kicking off will be number four, Lee Fritz. Both coming off big victories last Friday night. Waynesburg, 48-14 over the Carlington Cougars. And the uh, Brownsville Falcons defeated their River Rivals, the best center Bulldogs last Friday night. 42-8 down at best center. So Lee Fritz has got it on the tee. Stokes and Pugh back inside their own 15-yard line. And the young center kicks it off. And this is going to be hooked to the corner. And it's going to hit, and it'll go out of bounds. And the Falcons are going to start going 28-yard line. They kick it away from the Browns with deep people. Let's give that Falcon offense. It'll be Zipkovich at quarterback, Jason Wilson, Billy P. Terry Stokes in the backfield. Wilson replacing the injured uh, Justin Samuel, who is out for the year, tore his ACL, his PCL, and his MCL. It'll be Kramer and Smith at the tight ends, Balaban at center, Saxon and Bitter at the guards, Farrell and Ian Oleski at the tackle. We'll give you the Raiders as close as we could. We didn't get a starting line up for Waynesburg Central. But uh, we will uh, get it for you. Number 52, Brent Blair down here in all defensive line. But number 62, it is, uh, so you don't have a 62, that is number uh, 52. And that is with Brent Blair. We'll give you the rest as we go. First play, they're going to go up inside, and that's going to be Billy Pugh. And Pugh's going to come for the 30. Not two yards. Making the stop for the Red Raiders was Mike Konarski. Excuse me, Matt Emmerich, number 42 on the inside linebackers. So a good group of linebackers. You got Simpson, Emmerich. Uh, they're as good as you get in the WPIL. Uh, big number 31, man's the middle. That's Lanford Simpson. So second down, they give Pugh a pickup of three on the play. Second down, seven for the Falcons. And they give it to Wilson, a fullback, and Jason maybe for a yard or two. Once again, stacked up right at the middle line of scrimmage. Brent Blair, number 52, gets off the ball with a power for the Waynesburg Central Raiders. So the first third down situation for the Falcons. The ball is out at the Brownsville 38 to yard line. First down workers up at the 8, 38. So we got a third down to call at 6. So third down and 6 for the Brownsville Falcons. The ball resting at 32. Sammy McLaughlin, Lee Fritz. And uh, Craig playing the defense, uh, defensive backfield for Waynesburg. And they're going to run the option coming down the line. Chris Lipkin pitches a big hole in Stokes. Stokes turns it up. First down, drives it off to the 40. Finally getting it with number 42, Derek Mears. And number 52, Brent Blair. But it's first down, Brownsville, as Stokes picks up a good uh, eight yards on the first carry for him tonight. 
And really and honestly, one of the keys to this ball game is Brownsville's offense. And you know, you talk so much about Lee Fritz on offense and and the Lanford sinks and the big man in the middle, but the more the Falcons can control the clock, the more them guys stay off the field. So the Falcons have it up at the 40-yard line with a first down and 10. Now they go off formation, and Billy P looks to pop it to the corner, and he's not going to get anywhere. Big number 42 come through there, Matt Emery can make the stop, and there's going to be a loss of about two on the play. Back to about the 38-yard line. So they're going to give him a loss of one, so a favorable spot there for Brownsville the area. Trying to get the Waynesburg Central down lineman. We know our number 52, Grant Blair, is at this one defensive tackle. And I believe the other man out there is number 66. That would be uh, David Gray. David only a junior. And they're trying to get the two inside tackles for the five. They give it inside. Not a whole lot doing there. Maybe a gain of two for Billy Pugh. And Billy's third carry of the night. Big middle defensive line at that time is Waynesburg Central. Team with tough sledding up inside against the Raiders. So it's third down nine about at the 41 yard line. But Waynesburg did have some problems against Seton Lasau in the passing game as Brad Godowski proved for big yardage against him in that round 51 35 one. Stokes is the flanker to this side. And they got an eye formation down Zivkovich. And look out here, they're coming off the corner. They're going to run the option and they're going to pitch it. And Billy Pease doing down right there as he slips in the back here. They brought the corner off that side, off that left side. And they're going to be a loss of about two more for the Falcons. And uh, after picking up an initial first down, Waynesburg Central holds. And Seth DeRaza is going to punt it out there. And a very dangerous man back here is Lee Fritz, number four. Fritz is going to stand at about his 30. They've had some trouble in their special teams the last couple weeks. They need to get this point off. Garazio does, and he gets it off. And Lee Fritz is going to fair catch it. Almost knocked out of his hand by his own man down here. Big number 11. Abe Friedman almost knocked it out of Lee Fritz's hand. So the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders will get it for the first time. Let's give that Falcon defense. And nose tackle Sammy Petko, Rutherford and Saxon at the tackle, Smith and Kramer at the defense ends. They got to have big ball games tonight for the Falcons. Battellini and Ross Martini, the two young inside linebackers, who've done a good job the last couple of weeks. Harrison Thomas, Jason Hurst, Pat Rock and Stokes at the safety. Billy Pugh is back there right now. So Waynesburg Central comes out first down and 10, slot to the left side. And they turn and they give it to the inside guy. And Danny Hot, first carry of the night for Danny. And David Jackson makes the stop. A gain of one. Stokes comes up also from the corner spot. David Jackson probably uh, down the defensive line. He's playing for uh, Mike Rutherford's down. So second down, we're called nine for the Raiders. Once again, they stay with that slot to the left. Hot and uh, Simpson are the backs. Collar goes back in motion now. Now Lee Fritz is going to keep it. And Fritz turns the corner, and this time Browns is right there to make the stop. So you ready? Looked like you had the corner that time, but Browns will come up quickly to make the stop. Nice job over there. By that right side of that Browns with defense. So a big third down seven here. For the Brown, for the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders and for the Browns with defense. This would be a huge confidence builder if they could shut the Raiders down here. So third down, seven. Danny Hot's gonna motion. One back set. Lee Fritz wants to throw. Rush coming, Fritz fires. Ball man wide open first down Waynesburg. Up at midfield. Nice throw, nice catch. I believe it was number 33 making the grab for the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders. Cody Black, the senior wide receiver. So the Raiders get their first first down tonight. As Lee Fritz now is one for one, and he's going to get about 13 yards on that. And the Raiders got it just inside their territory. It's around the 49 yard line. And they give it to Lanford Simpson, and Simpson pulls his way ahead for three. David Jackson down there along with 79. I believe that's Mike Rutherford and David Jackson. 
making a stop. There was a whole bunch of Falcons down there. So they're going to give Lamford Simpson, we'll give him a pickup. And we'll call it out three for Lamford. Big number 31 last week. Uh, finally really healthy, too. For the Raiders. Seven of Collins, the Raiders. Falcons are outside to the right side of the field. Going to turn and give it to Lamford Simpson again. As Simpson's got some room and he gets upended after getting to the about the 42 yard line. Getting up off here from Brownsville and shaking up a little bit is Terry Stokes. Terry and Jesse uh, made a good time. But Terry upended him. Terry upended him, but I tell you what, Lamford Simpson put a little shot on him coming through this. Yeah, uh, Lamford Simpson picks up about, uh, we call it five. We call it six. It's a third down and two for the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders. The ball just inside the Browns with 45. Black is going to go in motion. Now he's going to go back away from the formation. They turn, they give first down. Waynesburg Simpsons into the secondary. He's carrying tackles for the 30. Gets 11. Jeff Powell finally got it, but Lanford Simpson's going to get 11 yards here. And right now, Lanford Simpson's been the man right now. First down and 10, Waynesburg. They moved it from their 34 down to the Waynes for the Browns with 30. And they give it. Fritz keeps it. He's got lots of room here. Fritz will turn the corner. Lee Fritz is going to go for a Raider touchdown. But you know what? This is going to come back. This is going to come back. There was a clip down at about the 15-yard line, so they're going to bring this all the way back. There was a block in the back down at about the 20-yard line. And it was right out in front of the referee, so you wonder what the Waynesburg wide receiver was thinking because it was right out in front of the referee. And you know what? The Waynesburg coaches are not complaining. And this will move it back, so it'll be first down and nine now for the Raiders at the 29, so a gain of one on the play. See what he turned the corner. There wasn't a falcon around. Cody Black comes wide to the right. Craig Bland is the skip to the left. And they give it to Danny Hot. And Danny Hot falls forward for about a yard. Jesse Saxon makes the stop. 442, so Browns are forcing Waynesburg to go the wrong way here and force them to drive the football. They eliminate the big plays, play solid defense, and that's what the Falcons are trying to do now here. Sammy McCollum wants to take a good speech to so I had a chance to watch him in baseball in the summer. He's a speedy little dude that can absolutely fly. So second down eight. Fritz wants to throw it. Got some time, fires underneath. Great catch, first down, Wednesday with the 15 point game. See, right now, there's the difference. Waynesburg can throw it a little bit. Great plan with a nice grab. Tony Patatucci made the stop. He was about to pick up a 15 more. So two completions, 28 yards for uh, quarterback Lee Fritz, and the Raiders now have it. Inside the Browns with 15 yard line. First down 10. Browns with defense need to make a stop here. Pretty black in motion. They're going to turn. They're going to give it to the big boy. And Rain Hope Fritz keeps it. 10, 5, touchdown, Rainsboro. Lee Fritz takes it 15 yards. And the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders are on the board first. as they just methodically moved it down the field. And now the extra point coming. Looks like number 51 here. Snap is down, kick is on its way. It's down the middle, and the way for Central Red Raider have jumped out here, seven up, and all the Browns are five. So, the impressive drive by the Raiders. Kevin Moore gets an extra point. Got a hold of uh, Kellen Kalen. 
But 7 up in Waynesburg Central, and I'll tell you what, they just methodically moved the football down the field on the Browns with defense. Two big, uh, the big third down pickup on a third down and seven. Lee Fritz was able to hit Cody Black, and the Raiders get their first down in midfield. They take it in. Lee Fritz caps it off for the 15 yard touchdown. I'll tell you what, he's the most dangerous man on this football team. Because I'll tell you what, he turns the corner, he has so much speed. So they take a drive there that lasts about four minutes. There's four or four left first quarter. Now Browns' offense got to move the football. They just can't give it right back to the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders here. Billy Pugh, Terry Stokes back deep. Lee Fritz will kick it off. I believe it's Lee Fritz. He kicked off the first one. This looks like it's Danny High. So the Raiders jump out 7-0. Big offensive line for Waynesburg, an impressive uh, job that time. Pugh and uh, Stokes were staying at about their 15-yard uh, line. They're going to kick it again. This is going to come to an up guy, and it's picked up 25, 35, 40, and out to the 41. So the Falcons got good field position. Didn't get the number to return, but the Falcons will start at their own 41-yard line. So from the 41, that's some of the other Red Raider defensive players here. Kelby Church is down inside. As we said, uh, Brant Blair is down inside. Looks like, uh, looks like Frank Bowser on that fourth side. So the Falcons will have it first down and 10. Pugh comes in motion to Billy Pugh, turns the corner. Gets to the corner 50. Pew to the 45. He's down at the Waynesburg Red Raider 41 yard line and Lee Fritz get it. Tell you what, we talked to one of the coaches last night. They said they put a couple of tricks in. And right there, they come out and ran it. And Billy Pew on his fifth attempt tonight. He gets a pickup of about 17 yards. So down to the Waynesburg Central 31, 41 yard line are the Browns with Falcons. Pugh, Toss, turns it up, Pugh to the 30, and Billy Pugh, he's got 10 more. Lambert Simpson finally gets him, but the Falcons, uh, with a little bit of quickness now, trying to get that Pugh to the corner, and the Falcons now with back-to-back -back first downs, Billy Pugh with 27 yards in his last two carries. Got to have some offense tonight. Somewhere, somehow, they're going to have to be able to move the football. So first and down, Browns, when they give it inside, Jason Wilson with some tough running. Gets about two. Brant Blair from his defensive tackle spot makes the stop for the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders. They have moved it now down to the Red Raider. We'll call it at the Raider, 28. 3.06 left to go, first quarter. Browns will trails the Red Raiders of Waynesburg Central. 7-0 here on just a perfect night for high school football. Both these teams are headed to the Whippeals. Pugh, Toss, trying to get does, bounce back. And Billy will fall for stands on his feet. And Billy Pugh will get down to the Raider, 22. Nifty run by the senior halfback. And where they mark it, we're gonna give Billy a pickup of about five. Two down territory for the Brownsville Falcons as they reach the Raider 22. It's a good though defense by the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders. Uh, a lot of times you get that over pursuit there and you get it back the caliber of William Pugh and I'll tell you what, he gets the cutback and he's gone. Waynesburg was able to linebackers. Such a great group of linebackers there. Derek Mears, Lee Fritz. Imbrick, they're about as good as you can get in class, and maybe in the WPIL. So I formation behind them. They're going to give it inside. Jason Wilson should have enough for a Brownsville first down. Good, tough running by the inside fullback, Jason Wilson. And they're going to have to have something from him tonight because that forces Williams for Central to honor the fullback. And it should open up their option game. So from the 20-yard line, the Falcons have got it after Waynesburg Central 20, trying to answer the Red Raider touchdown. Billy Pugh is the flanker to the right. They're going to come in motion again. 
This time they try to run him. Q's going to be dropped for a two-yard loss. Nice play that time by Derek Mears, number 42. Excuse me, Matt Emery. So back to the 22-yard line. And now we got a flag and illegal motion against Brownsville. And I'm Waynesburg, they're probably gonna decline his penalty and make it second and 11 here. So the Raiders will take the loss and the down, second down, 11, the ball resting at the Waynesburg Central 22 yard line. 128 first quarter, the Raiders scored in their opening possession. Brownsville has now moved the ball from their 41 to the Raiders 22 yard line. See if they try to slip Brandon Smith out here. Kramer, the tight end to the right, and a double hut tight field house. And they're gonna throw it, he fires, got a man! Intercepted Gessler. And look out here, he's got room to roam. This is Lee Fritz to the 20, 25, and a great block down there on Brett Ballard. And the Raiders will bring it back to the 27 yard line. I believe that was Sammy McCollard and caught Brett Ballard looking the other way. But the Falcons turn it over. Sammy McCollard with a vicious block down there on Brett Ballard on the return. They went to the throw. Now the defense has got to come up here. So Waynesbury, I tell you what, we tell you the one player you got to watch is Lee Fritz. Fritz has got a touchdown and an interception. Nicola comes Franklin to the right. The split to the left is Craig Blaine. Now they're going to bring Nicola back in motion, take him back away, and they're going to just turn it and give it. And Lee Fritz, should be man for Simpson, and Simpson turned his back. And the five down here after about a two yard game, there's a whole bunch of Falcons down there. Lee Fritz is the key to this football team. There's no question in my mind. Uh, I'll tell you what, and right now he's made two big, three big plays. The pass on the first down on the opening drive when it was third and seven, the touchdown run of 15, and then the interception at the goal line. Lee Fritz! Beside that, right now I think these two teams are very evenly matched. Danny Hot, Hot will turn it up and get to about the 35 yard line. And the Raiders are going to be faced with a third down here in about two. Mark Battellini, David Jackson. So a big play here coming up, and this should be the end of the first quarter. Well, we have one quarter down here at Redstone Field. So far, it's the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders leading the Falcons 7-0. We're watching the Hawthorne High School football game of the week.
Izzy Martini Painting and Wallpaper Contractor located in Grindstown, Pennsylvania. 22 years in business, fully insured, free estimates, and covering three counties. Beginning the year 2000, adding siding and roofing services. Gudak Bowling Lanes, located Route 40 East, Brownsville, Pennsylvania. AMF AccuScore Automatic Scoring, all open bowling, Saturdays and Sundays. Visit Gudak Bowling Lanes on the internet at www.gudak.com. machine for all of your general automotive repair and complete automotive machine shop service call 785-9699 Turn a given Lanford Simpson. I don't think he's got his first down. He does it. Great defensive play by the Roundsville Falcons. Brandon Smith, Saxon, David Jackson, and Mark Badalini. And a big defensive stop right there for the Brownsville Falcons. So Dougie Patterson, Billy Pugh back deep. Talk about Lee Fritz right now. Three attempts running the ball. How about 17 yards on a TD? And he's got another 28 throwing. And he's also the punter, and he gets his punt off. Drives it deep. Wow. Dougie Patterson trying to run it down, and Patterson's going to let it roll inside the 15. The Falcons will be back up over the 13 yard line. Right now, it is Lee Fritz doing it all for the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders. About a nifty punt of 52 yards. I'll tell you what, he's the man right now. A great baseball player, super basketball football player, and some people told me he might be the best basketball player in the school. So now the Falcons back up at their own 13-yard line and need to get some offense here again. Keep moving the football, keep running the clock. They had a nice drive last time, ended on the intersection at the goal line. First down and 10, Brett Battleman back in the ball game. That's a good sign. Brandon Smith is the split to the side. They got Stokes as a Franklin to the right, the eye formation. Beyond Zivy. And they turn and give it. Jason Wilson, big over. Wilson's got one man to beat. He comes out over the 25 to the 26. First down, Browns good. Pickup of about 12 for Jason. Finally getting him is Lee Fritz. And the Falcons moving out to the 27-yard line. You know, every little bit, they get a little bit more confidence here. Waynesburg Central 7, Brownsville nothing. We've moved into the second quarter. Full house backfield. Now they're going to run the counter. Terry Stokes cuts it up. Maybe a yard for Terry. Met by a whole bunch of Red Raiders. Like number 33, Cody Black getting off the pound for the Raiders. By Church. Kelly Church also makes a stop. Give uh, Terry a pick up a one on his second carry of the night. Billy Pugh right now, eight carries, 17, 27, 32, 34, 36, 39, 35 yards so far for Billy Pugh on the ground. Blue house back here, they have zip coach. The ball is resting at the uh, Brownsville, 27 yard line with a second down call. They give it to Pew. Billy fights forward, gets out over the 30 to about the 31. They're having some success running the ball against Wayne, but there's a flag right down in the middle of the pile. This is usually in the area of Holden. Brandon Smith is out there. And a face mask against the Raiders. This is going to give Brownsville a little bit more. Billy had about four on the carry. 
the last game here for these seniors here at Redstone Field. What a great three years they have had here. WPIO uh, semifinalists when they were sophomores, quarter semifinalists, sophomores in junior year. And they're going back to the Whippy playoffs. Now the face mask is a five yard variety. And I don't think it gives the Falcons their first down, but it does make it second down and short. But down maybe to play with you. Poor coach Don Bartalamucci and the Falcons. Coach Don Bartalamucci, he's sixth year here at the helm of the Brownsville Falcons. Dave Serra making his initial season. He's taking over with Russ Moore of the Williamsburg Central Raiders. He has back to the turn to give Jason Wilson's guy his first down as he fights for the Boy, they're getting a good ball game right now out of the um, junior shot through that. Jason got two. He got a Falcon first down out over the 40. To the 42. Pat Blair from his defense. Yes, but they're fighting some success right now. Two ball against the Red Raiders. And more importantly, though, they are chewing up clock. And that is the most important thing here with the Browns and Falcons. Keep number four on the defensive side of the football. But he turned the ball game around against the Shallowry Cougars down in Shallowry four weeks ago. Quick pitch, Billy Pugh cuts it up. Billy bounces off tacklers. Billy Pugh, does he get a five and first down? He's gonna go touch the first. Pick up a race for Billy. One is Kurt Perry. Kelly Church finally getting, but I'll tell you what, you're starting to look here a little bit. The World War Central Red Raiders, uh, not with the enthusiasm you would expect them to come down here with tonight. Be about a second and two. This might be a nice time for maybe to go up top, throw it away from Lee Fritz. Once again, the four miles backfield. Billy Pugh's going to go in motion. They're going to widen the guy. They're going to turn inside. Jason Wilson. Just get the shoulders turned. Get his first down. I believe he does. Should be enough for a Falcon first down here. There it is. They're moving the football on the ground here against the Red Raiders. So they moved this one from their 12 out to the red rate to their own 48. They have a first down and 10. They're going to go under nine minutes when they snap this football. Offensively, they have played really well right now. Hugh is the spike to the left. Stokes is on the side and the run back set to Jason Wilson. Wilson's got big yardage here. 40 down to the 38 yard line where Lee Fritz makes the stop. 10, 14 more for the Stewart. They are moving the football on the ground here. That offensive line right now doing a great job here in the first half. 8-29, first quarter to the first half. Browns and trails at 7-0. But they're on the move again. It's again, the one back set. They're going to turn. They're going to give it to Jason Wilson. Jason Wilson's going to get about two. A whole lot of Raiders that time waiting for him. How about this? Waynesburg has one, two, three, eight, nine, ten, eleven offensive plays in the first half. Browns has got 10, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 offensive plays. They've had the ball almost three quarters of the first half here. They just got to punch a touchdown in here somewhere along the line. Jason Wilson got one. Tell you what, he's ran hard tonight from his fullback spot. Again, the four house down Zivkovic. Stokes now motions out of the formation. They quick pitch it to Billy Pugh. Pugh inside the 35 to the 34. About two more for Billy. But now a third, and we're going to call it about six. Lanford Simpson coming from his linebacker spot. Tell you, Lanford uh, has really, uh, tell you what the story is, but he was just a rider there in the eighth grade team. Didn't want to play for a Great wrestler. Phenomenal wrestler. Uh, he got banged up a little bit last year. He's been a hurt ball player, but he'll tell you what, he's gutted it out every Friday night for the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders. Yeah, so the Raiders on the sideline looking a little bit, uh, you know, they're trying to get their crowd into this a little bit. They expect him to come down and at this time have the ball game well in hand. They give it once again. There's nothing going this time. Jason Wilson from maybe a yard. Follow that play. Up the middle. Lanford Simpson makes the stop, so it'll be fourth down for the Browns and Falcons, and they are going to call a timeout. 
You know what? We'll take a timeout too. 6:34 left and a half. It's Waynesburg Central seven. Browns with nothing. We're watching high school football on Harold Standard Television. Selecting an attorney can be difficult. Did you know that there are almost a million attorneys in the United States? Did you know that a national board measures their experience and expertise? And that fewer than 2,200 achieve certification? Did you know that only 30 attorneys in the country were certified in both civil and criminal law? Did you know that two of them live and work right here? Meet James and Samuel Davis, the hometown professionals at Davis & Davis Attorneys at Law. Billy Pugh inside, 
two fights four down to about the seven. Lanford Simpson was hanging on for your life. But Ray, do you get the feeling here that the Red Raiders, the Red Raiders will be flat right now? The more you let Brazel hang around here, the better they're gonna get. They're a little bit flat right now, Waynesburg. There's not a whole lot of emotion on that sideline. This is an impressive drive right now by the Brazel Falcon. Really great for the headphones on. It's a big drive right here. Four hours back from behind Chris Zipkovich. They're gonna turn, give it to Stokes, and Stokes gets down to about the six, so brings up a third down. You know what, you may take the field goal here with Seth Theresa. Tell you what though, in the first half, the Browns was definitely outplayed the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders. And the Falcons have taken their time out here, their second one and a half. But it, it, if you look down on the sideline here, the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders sideline is showing like no emotion right now. They are a very flat football team. Don Bortalamucci here has got the Falcons right now on the brink of tying this football game up. So a good first half for, for the Brownsville Falcons as, as they lead just trail 7-0. And, and I mean, honestly, they have played probably one of their best halves of football. Offensively, they have been very crisp. I'll tell you what, they may be the most dangerous 4 C team going into the Whippeo playoffs next Friday night. Yeah, if I'm East Allegheny or Apollo Ridge, I'm sitting there going, please, not right now, because first off, Browns has been there before, the confidence level is there, and the kids, uh, their goal was to get back, they're there. I'll tell you what, they have taken the number two ranked Waynesburg Central Red Raiders right here, and uh, they have gone toe to toe with them, at least for the first 15 minutes and first 22 minutes of this football game. But a key third down, and they can get a first down if they get it just inside. Brett Ballard will bring him out of the ball, the senior center. This is a group of kids that was very emotional before the ball game. Option coming. Zip to the flag. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Brownsville. An impressive drive by the Browns. The Falcons capped off by Chris Zipkin, which is 7 0 for the And it's 7 6 with Seth Durazio attempting the extra point. Impressive 87-yard drive by the Bloomsburg Rockets. Seth Terrazio making sure the extra point. He has not missed one yet this year. Snap is good. The extra point is up, and we are even. With 3.48 left in the first half, it's the Bloomsburg Rockets 7, the Bloomsburg Central Red Raiders 7. We're talking about a huge drive. It came right there. And now the Waynesburg Central is just moved down and there's not a whole lot of emotion on the Waynesburg sideline. And this is a football team that needs this ball game probably a little bit more than the Browns are Falcons right now. Because right now, should they win tonight, and I'm a firm believer that they win, they're the defending champ, they're the number one seed to win. I would put the votes too, then you put a follow in East East Alligator. If they lose tonight, then the winner of the Alec Cooper Center game has got to be number one. But now the Browns, the defense needs to make a stop here. Okay, that was an impressive drive. That drive took up almost nine minutes. Danny Hopp will go back deep. Ray Bland, it looks like Sammy McCollum. And Seth Terrazio will kick it off. So with 3.48 left here in the first half, it's the Razorback Central Raiders 7, the Browns go back in 7. In, the more confidence they're going to gain. And if you're Waynesburg, you probably want to come out here, nail the knockout punch, and get out of here. <laughs> Seth Terrazio, maybe uh, one of the top five kickers in the WPL, will kick off. Craig Bland's the middleman. Great speed there in Bland and McCollum. They're going to hit this on the ground. It's going to come over to Danny Hot. Hot to the 20. Danny trying to get out from the sideline. Danny Hot will get to the 26 line. That's what he's going to get. As uh, down with Dougie Patterson, number 26. <coughs> Tell you what, look for Lee Fritz to fake this and keep it somewhere on the line here. So it's first down 10, Waynesburg Central and Raiders. This is the first time they've touched the ball since early here in the second quarter. Great 
Clay knocked it. Clay 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 Cody Patacucci able to get back and make the play. Nice job by Cody Patacucci. As they were trying to get it back in a hurry. So second and ten. Red Raider to it. Good speed matchup here in Tony Patacucci, the sophomore around defensive back. Great point in the senior five receiver. Catch there. Come on, Gary! And it's first down for the Red Raiders. Ray Bland is the flanker. Spits and left this side. Spits keeping around the option. And then he got him. A whole bunch of five in here. Jesse Saxon, David Jackson. Second down and 15, almost 60 for the Red Raiders. Get it, he fires, man, wide open. First down, great win. In 
inside the 45 to the 41. He's a magic man right now, Lee Fritz is. Every time they've had a chance to make a big stop, Lee Fritz has come up here. Dougie Patterson got him. Pickup of about, uh, what it's about, 24. Rides the option, keeps it, looks to turn the corner, and he breaks one tackle, looks to cut back, and Lee Fritz will go down inside the 35 to about the 34. Pick up of about seven. Jeff Palak finally got him, 110 left. Every time they needed a play, Lee Fritz has turned it up, give the kid credit, that's why he's the, uh, Maybe one of the top five quarterbacks in the Whitfield. He's as good as advertised. And a great throw that time to Craig Bland, who made a run a great route. They ran five wides. They ran two guys deep and ran a little more. And Craig Bland came wide open. So both coaches have gone into their bags of tricks here in the first half. Raiders have one time out left. Rounds are off to the As the Raider fans trying to push their team across the line of spin ends on here. Ray Green matched up with Tony Palatucci. Fritz wants to try. Lee Fritz is firing. He's going to be Palatucci. He's got the coverage. And we're going to throw a flag in. Yeah. That's a 15 yard penalty, so it's not going to take it to the one. Take it to the 20. I thought it was good defense here. But I think they're going to get Tony for not turning around quick enough. So pass interference on Browns here. In high school, it's a 15 yard penalty. Outside the 30, 15 yards, and moving inside. See, and this is going to take it down. Wainsbury's going to have the ball at the Browns. Browns are trying to keep him out of the end zone here. Wainsbury's one time out left. Seconds left. Wainsburg with just a one time out. No gain, second and ten. They have controlled every aspect of this football game except number four. Fritz wants to throw it. Got a lot of time. Steps up. Fine. That ball's going to be incomplete for the Raider man. Four of six. 74 yards. Not a bad night for Mr. Uh, Fritz. Now, big third down. This is where Lee Fritz has been able to make has been able to make big plays for the Waynesburg Central Red Raiders. It's third down and ten. He has made some big plays. He's converted some huge third downs here. It slipped out from his tight end spot. And Waynesburg will take timeout. So, 
This is a big play right here. It's fourth down and 10 for Wayne. Look at the Browns on 19. Derek Mears had slipped out, but Brandon Smith did a nice job of recovering and getting back on him. And they're gonna kick a field goal here. So the Raiders are gonna attempt a 37-yard field goal. Browns and Falcons have been pretty good at blocking kicks. Brand Blair will kick it. Kellen Kaler will hold it. This is going to be 36 yards. 25 seconds left here in the fourth down. Browns with seven lanes work seven. Snap is good. It's on its way. It is. Teletech is a worldwide leader in customer relationship management. Utilize